Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a continuance of the practice makes perfect. Let's look at those skies, let's roll that intro, let's see how we get on. Okay, everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, it is a watercolor and it's continuing the theme of practice makes perfect. A couple of weeks ago, I did a small video on how you can practice your skies and utilize the paper in both ways and create something from that. Well, I wanted to continue that idea and turn our practice skies into a real painting. So I want to do a little sky for you today in watercolor. I've chosen a little scene from West Mercia in Essex with the boats, the lifeboat station, just really setting up the scene to put this big, massive white cloud with a bit of threatening gray in it as well. So we're gonna see how we get on with that today and hopefully you'll get something from it to move on with. And before we get going, let me just say as always, thank you very much to all my subscribers. Thanks for your support. Thank you for doing that and uh, all the comments that you leave for me on the, each of the videos. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing to do, but you really, really do help the channel grow and reach a bigger audience around the world. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much in advance. On top of all that, there is also my uh, website, which has got downloadable content on there now, so you can download and buy a film and watch it as many times as you want and learn from that. There is also my very, very active Patreon. Now that has been set up for about a year or so now and it's growing steadily. There are tons and tons of films on there to you, for you to enjoy and get something from and learn with. There is a Friday night live stream every week, every Friday at seven o'clock. On top of all that, there is also a very active Patreon a community group of mine on Facebook now. There you can interact with each other and with me and you can post pictures, ask questions, get answers, all this thing. Lots and lots of help there. So for five or ten dollars a month it costs not a lot but you also get uh, so much for it and you also have that great knowledge that you are helping support me in all the efforts that I do each and every week to create new in content for both YouTube and for Patreon. So take a look, all the details are under this and every video I'd make in the show more tab. Look at the uh, link, go over there, check the tiers out. If you wanna get involved, you'll be so, so welcome. Enough said about all of that. Let's get back to our skies. Let's talk about the um, practice makes perfect angle of what we were doing a couple of weeks ago. I'll put a link to that video up there for you anyway. So if you haven't seen that one, check that out first and then come back and have a look at this one. Take care. All the best. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Happy painting. Be safe. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you next Friday. Bye. Okay, now let's look at this. It's a very, very low horizon subject. So let's just put in as minimal amount as we need to. Let's just bring our horizon line somewhere through here quite low we don't need too much it's all about this lovely big sky and then we've got a um a bit of a, a, a edge to the the dock or the um coastal defense there which comes out so far on the pilings you can see them every so often dotted let's just put a few in very very non-detailed i don't want to put too much into this and just bring that up a little higher because they don't actually go the full height of that wall. This one does, however, this one is somewhat a little bit there, a little bit lower there. And then on top of that, we have this lovely, in fact, I think I may have to extend this just a little bit more to get this in. I think this is the lifeboat station uh, at West Mercy, and it's a lovely place. I've only ever been there the one time, got to be honest with that. I would like to have more time to travel around these places. Unfortunately, commitments don't allow me to get out as much as I really would love to. But never mind, um, it's there. And if you are fairly local, you can get to this place anytime. The day I was there, the only day I ever saw this, I did a, <coughs> excuse me, I did a couple of paintings uh, of the area of this uh, place 
on that day, but there was an almighty, uh, rapidly changing as well, an almighty storm system running through the area. I'm just going to put that in there. This is predominantly very, very dark. There are a few windows low down, which will try and preserve those. And one up there. So this line here has got to continue on for probably about to there, I think. So we're going to take that little section out just there and we can run that on to the end something like that I feel there's a there's sort of there's a step or there are lines of fencing up there there's a ladder comes down there somewhere and then we come to this small section on the end let's put that in very quickly now and that's pretty much our lifeboat station sorted I'm just going to raise that roof raise the roof there you go Raise that roof a little bit. My pencil marks got a little heavier there, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, this is going to be fairly, fairly dark. There's a little bit of light in there I want to preserve and the end doorways on the end of this building. You just see the end of the building like that. A little bit of light around the soffits and a little bit of light in a window, which I can see there. Quite a strange looking roof on this section here, just there. I'm not quite sure how that works. But, never mind, it's not a problem. We're just going to take that out a little bit further to there. And then I'm just going to put in, suggest a little flag at the top there. The other masks, we're going to put those in later on. I'm not going to put the van in. There's a, a white van sitting on there. In fact, there are two white vans sitting on there. But there is this little uh, thing which I'm just going to suggest it. And I'm not going to try and recreate and miss that with the paint. I want to come straight through that area. So what I might do is use a little bit of body color later on just to finish that off. There is a support section there underneath it. And we come through. I don't remember. I think this is like an artificial heart. So that there is a launching um, platform for boats or whatever. There are a couple of vessels which we're going to put in. So we're going to put this first boat in. This is a, some sort of motor cruiser, which is sitting on the mud or the sand at that point, like that. And it's got a nice flying bridge on the top. And then the cabin structure there. And there's our boat. Very, very simple design. Side view is always nice and easy to draw, I hope. At least I always think so. And then we're going to put in our big yacht behind this. This is, I have seen this vessel, uh, picture of this vessel actually on this hard. Um, but it's not at this point, so we're going to put it down here. It's a older style vessel. Um, I don't quite know the type of the name, but it's got a very, very nice mask which I'm just going to indicate there with a single well I say single almost single line and we're going to take the boom of the sail which is furled up onto there that keeps that nice and you can't see the front of the vessel so much because of the flying bridge of this one is in the way but we've got two boats on the mud or on the sand and they give support to this side here it's a nice balance and that's good I'm going to put in the um, pole, big, big timber in there. And it does dwarf this boat. I almost thought I got it wrong for a minute, but it does dwarf the boat. There is a second one, which is nice too. We're going to put that down there. I've given it a little bit more of an angle than it sh probably should have, but I quite like that. Gives a bit of character to it. This is coming down. So we're going to let that sort of descend down our beach line like that. And then we've got a little bit of intercoastal water from the area there. And then we've got a dark line and then we have a very, very low horizon. I'm just, I'm making it a little more than it is to be honest. I'm just giving it a little height so that it's not completely lost, but it does come through this area here. So we're probably about right with that. And the actual, the nice part is that the darkness that we can put in there will actually give that boat its nice light feel. So that's quite useful. And of course, it just disappears through here. Now, this area here on this 
mechanism is quite high. I'm going to run that through there. That's going lower and getting losing out to whatever's in the distance there. I'm making this area up because actually there's a that white van is blocking everything. I can't quite see what's going on. As for the sky, I'm really going to leave that. I'm also not putting any drawing detail into the foreshore. This is mud and sand and um, debris all over the beach here and I'm just going to leave that. So I want to concentrate on this is my drawing. There's my my fishing, uh, my um, oh, <laughs> my lifeboat station. Uh, I think actually the boat station could be a little bigger. It, it's sort of, it's not directly um, in relation to the rest of it. So I have two choices. I think I will just change what I'm seeing. Now I hate using this hard rubber, this hard eraser on my paper. It's never the best thing for it but I feel that I'm just going to have to bite the bullet. I couldn't lay my hands on the ones that I was seeking. So let's just redraw this very, very quickly. Give it a little more height. Take it all the way back through there. And we're gonna take this back to about here. Just enough to get it into the picture without causing too much problems. So I'm gonna bring that up to maybe about there. Actually, it's even higher than that. Good job this thing is um, quite dark, or else I would be in a bit of a problem, a bit of a pickle with this. But there we are. I think we've sort of, we've got that area, we've got that light coming down, and we've got a bit of roof that comes through there. And just making some subtle adjustments to everything that we're seeing. A little bit of a window in there, as I say. And it's... I still can't get over this roof. It's quite a lovely shape to it and the way it comes down and comes out through there like that. Okay, I think we just got away with increasing the size. It probably even, if I'm honest, could be even higher. There's something coming down there. I don't know what that is, but we'll leave it in place. A couple of little windows. I still want to indicate those. Let's put in... A little bit of light at the end of there and the doorways just going to suggest those come back into here put our window in something like that and another one that's through here that's four of those so let's just take that through to there okay there's our window there and let's put our flagpole back in and We've got, we can put those uh, railings in with some body color later. Not a big deal. And let's just come back in with our ladder type thing there and suggesting that rail through there. I think that's probably better. It's probably still not quite the size it should be in relation to everything else, but it's better, it's bigger. And I think it makes uh, a bigger statement of it. So we're gonna leave it at that and we're gonna get on. Okay, so. Brush wise, let me just talk about these very, very quickly. Uh, my normal set of brushes I use are packed uh, for um, my gallery and use down there at the moment and also plein air. So these are my sort of backup ones I have. Again, a lot of them, uh, these ones are Rosemary and Company and they are synthetics and these are two squirrel mops from uh, I've had these so many years there's a number a zero and a four from Raphael and, uh, and these I've had probably 30 years and you can tell they're starting to get split where the water's starting to en encroach into the uh, timber but anyway not a problem they still work and they still give me a very fine point and what I'm going to be doing to start with is wetting a lot of this surface for that I'm going to use a much larger uh, mop. This actually is a quite expensive, to be honest with you, Windsor and Newton um, squirrel. Um, it's a number 10 in their range, but it's a massive one. Right now, let's get mixing and let's come in with some lovely blue. And to this, I'm mixing up a lot of cobalt blue. And we've got quite an area to cover, so try and mix sufficient for this. Keep on mixing, keep on going. There we go. And to that, I'm gonna put in some thalocyanine blue. 
Oh, that's the wrong blue. That's uh, there's the phthalo blue. All right now that just turns our blue to a nice sky blue, and we've got a lot of it there to play with, and we're going to use every bit of that. I'm just going to go and clean my water and come back. Okay, so continuing on, I want to wet the whole of this area, and I'm just going to literally I'm using clean fresh water. And I'm just going to wet the whole of this sky. I don't always do this. I often go in with um, lovely uh, shapes of colour on dry paper. Bearing in mind that, uh, get rid of that hair. Bearing in mind that watercolour will only go where the paper is wet and allowed to do so. So if it's dry, of course, the, the paint will not. Uh, go in that area. Let's take that all the way down there around the top of the roof there Now it's going to appear very very wet there. So I'm just going to take off the excess water Around the top of the roof and just stop that going any further down I'm just going to check the wetness. And there's some areas that I've missed. Let's just come over there Now I'm going to let this dry ever so slightly. I, it's buckling the paper which you'd expect but it will dry off and it will dry quite evenly. Now one thing you must do also is when you've got a lot of water on the paper, it's gonna come across your tape if you indeed use tape to tape your paper down with. Take that excess off because the paper, the water on the paper will dry considerably quicker than the water that's left on this tape. And what will happen is that any excess water on here will push back into the paper, it will draw it back in, and you get those awful cauliflower marks that will start being created. That's the end of that brush for the moment. I'm just gonna look at this, I'm looking at the sheen. I just missed a little bit there, let's just come back into that. Okay, just tapping off any excess water that's sort of drifting down. Very much the same way as it would if it was indeed a wash. But there we are. Okay, I think we're good to go. Now for the colour. And looking at my sky, I've got a lovely blue. I mix just a little bit more to be on the safe side. And I'm going to come in this side with some phthalo blue. Look how strong that is. Lovely summer's day. While I'm at it, I ought to mix up some of the colours that I'll be using uh, for the... Uh, thundery or the more stormy sky so for that I'm going to be using a mix of ultramarine to start <clears throat> not too much but more on the indigo quite I love using indigo it's quite close to a Payne's gray in many ways but it's just a really nice blue Venetian or Indian red uh, one of those two colors a very very similar color and that gives you this sort of reddish color here but if you're not happy and come in with some cobalt or some ultramarine and take that back to that lovely blue. So we have two colours ready to go and let's see where we go with this. And before we get going, what I will say is this is the drawing, this is all wet and it's, it's not so much a skill, it's a case of trying to tread very, very carefully as you put this on because you the paint will just want to merge all over the place. And so it should do, it's great. But just be careful, and like that, and just drop in little bits of colour in. You don't need to go too mad. If you want to arrest the movement like that, then just, just literally tilt your paper up and stopping it moving ever so slightly. I'm just going to come down here and bring my blues down, let them fall. And it's just control. That's all it is. Control. Put a little bit more cobalt in at the top there. And taking it all the way up to, to there. Takes that all the way off to the top. I quite like that. That gives us a nice sense of our blue sky coming down. I am now going to lessen the pigment. As it comes further down here, I'm going to lessen the pigment. Let that fall and let that bleed. Try and arrest some of it, like that. Take out, I'm using that clean bit of tissue just to show you again. I take out the pigment out, the bristles of the brush, and just soften and arrest the movement a little bit. There are lots of white areas down through here. I need to allow for that. 
So I'm just trying to tease that out and arrest some of the movement of these wash as it comes down. But it is just a wet in wet and you get a lovely sense of this cloud. Look at that up there. I'm just going to play around with that so we don't leave too many hard edges. I want that softness up in there. I'm going to let that come through. In fact, that's going to... There we are. Just play around with that. That's doing its own thing. Quite happy with that. And just leave it really. It's doing what I wanted it to do. I'm going to let that dry now. And that is our sky in that regard pretty much done but while we're still playing around with this lovely uh, light let's come in with our going to mix some of that blue and that together just to start this off and I'm going to come in now with our beautiful thundercloud it does get heavy way down here but we're going to add to that in a successive layer so let's just come in take some of this right up to there just build in some of the lovely lights and highlights in the edges of this cloud as we're coming down. Add some more deeper color through here, like so. Taking it quite hard edge because it is going to be harder edge. We can improve that as and when this starts to dry up on us a little bit. But in the meantime, we've got this beautiful color coming all the way down through these posts. Let's just get rid of this. a little bit of dirt and a little hair in the paint. I do hate that. So annoying. All right, so bring that down, working it very, very carefully. And all the way down to our horizon. Down through here. Let's check that. And we can come straight through that part of the boat there because it's going to be darker. But we do need to preserve our whites where we can take that all the way through there down through there and up to that staging let's just run that back up into the sky there we go and it's almost almost but not quite almost painting itself let's take that down there be very very actually it comes across here doesn't it so let's take that there's a very simple shape to begin with but we're gonna um work on that we're going to add to that now it's still wet or damp this surface and we have lots of areas we can play around with just seen that just going to lift that off a little bit dry brush just take the moisture out your brush just lift that off let it settle down and it will not cause you any further problem but we have a really nice sky very quickly done and it didn't take a lot of time this part hopefully won't take too many uh, minutes either let's come in with some darker blue some more indigo i'm going to put cobalt into it too <clears throat> excuse me a little bit of indigo lovely strong color now you've got to temper a little bit i'm going to put a little bit of the red into that too much check it down the side quite like that but I think it should be I'm actually going to put some violet into that and check that again quite like that okay so let's just while we've got the dampness it's starting to dry off but let us just put in some more features to this cloud and then it will leave a semi hard edge through here which is great because we're getting that extra color that extra menace in our clouds um, sort of as it builds again and I gotta say on the day this thing just kept coming over and over dropping a load of rain and intense rain I mean my at one point I got caught out so quickly that I ended up just abandoning throwing my coat over as I often do in such circumstances throwing my coat over my pallet and my easel and just heading for the car and uh, letting the rain do its thing once it had stopped then i was able to get back out and continue my progress on the painting amid a wash <laughs> of a wet coat and everything else there but it was a lot of fun i did a lot of work on this day and i don't um i didn't regret one bit of it the rain's just actually the you know when you consider all the lovely cloud structure that you saw once this was coming in adding a little bit more cobalt um, yeah the lovely cloud structure as this was uh, changing at a rapid pace 
it was amazing to to see all the shapes and the forms and the, the lovely it really was it was stunning the idea is to keep an eye on the water to keep an eye on how the paper is drying and that way you can add without too much spread if you go in too soon then you do run the risk of uh, the paint spreading and becoming less effective in what you're trying to achieve so keep an eye on it and you'll get some lovely lovely effects like this just a little bleed nothing too much let's just bring that color up let's make this cloud a lot more threatening in one or two places especially over here we've got that lovely dark i still want to add a little bit more to that and as i said this is all happening while the paper is still very very wet to to do this had i waited till this paper was dry not a problem see it's drying up up there i can tell the way that the brush touched the paper i could tell that that was drying but i just wanted to put in an extra when it's dry nothing wrong with it going in dry brush but you do have a very different effect i'm just running dampness over there and just allowing that hard edge just a little bit up into some of these shapes up in here just extra shapes into our cloud yes as i say that i'm sort of running off topic but you get the idea that you can put this color in whether it's dry semi-dry or very wet all that's going to happen is that you're going to get a very different effect with the paint what it will do how it will act is going to change depending on the level of moisture in the painting or the paper more than anything else let's just take that through there just giving one or two more subtle bluey colors into some of these forms I'm losing a bit of color so let's just come in just enough to get this job finished can I bring that color up into there and I can feel the change in the paper surface I can feel it through the brush the way the bristles are dragging across a drier surface unlike that of a very wet surface and so I need to move fairly fast I want to bring some color up into there and dampen it off I don't want that hard edge I just want that damp so just take the paint out the damp brush just come back in ease that in that will soften that mark allowing me to come back in this way with a few more colors before we have to consider that this is done You've got to work fairly fast that's the thing and I come across here this has got some lovely cloud forms that are beyond the um, main cloud I just want to soften that edge a little bit and just a couple more coming through there we can see there are some forms this way again they're very very soft they're not as hard and they are just parts of the cloud I don't know more cloud coming through who knows but there's just some lovely shapes just want to quickly put those in and then just one or two extra little bits of this one as it's sort of breaking off and creating more forms beyond the main body of the cloud just tapping it in there's still enough moisture just about to 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 make this happen and i'm just using that just to finish that off and maybe a couple of higher ones almost up into the blue let's try that so bring some of those forms this way and it gives a little bit of scale a little bit of you know you can feel that cloud that's going on behind this one comes out and i want to use that i want to get that in so there's a nice big piece of this cloud that's protruding right out like that there we go I'm happy to say not an awful cauliflower amongst it all which is really good that's quite nice when that happens doesn't always go down that way just wanted to put a bit that's almost too dark tap that out and spread that bit of indigo I just popped in there I don't think it needs to be so heavy and there's actually quite a bit of that violet just going to tap a little bit of that violet back in there 
I've got to be very careful because this is the point when it's very, very easily overworked and you do stand the risk of losing it. But I just think we've got enough of this happening in our sky. Let's just bring a couple more pieces down like that. I think that's enough. Any more, and I really feel that it's going to overwork the whole thing. I quite like what we've got. I quite like this threatening sky here. I could have softened up a couple of these and I'm just going to tease the edge just to see if it'll allow me to take some of that out. If I'm not careful though I will get an awful reaction with the wetness in the paint but I think I think I just got away with it. Just a quick tap just to make sure it doesn't spread. A little bit of there. Just again, just a quick tap, take off any excess, and I'm done. I'm going to leave this to dry out, and we'll just get this area done and dust it, and hopefully the painting will be complete. Okay, so that's all nice and dry. I haven't really dried this up here. I'm not touching it, but here I've dried it off enough to continue working. What I want to do is put on a couple of small washes. I'm going to use some burnt sienna and some raw sienna together a little bit of cobalt in there and making a sort of bit of a dirty color but very very light wash and this is going to be the uh, sort of fairly murky because there is not a lot of light going on here of my foreground this is my um, beach as it were the mud the sand the beach and what have you so I'm just going to put that on and I'm leaving quite a bit of white paper because I want to drop in a little bit of violet, just a small touch of it there. And that's going to come up into here and just going to influence that brown with a little bit of blue in there, which is catching, you know, where, the, where that mud is quite wet on the sand or on the mud, it's catching a little bit of lovely blue reflection from the sky above and I wanted that influence and also the correlation that little bit of um, suggested connection between here and here really does work well and I'm just going to deliberately put in a little bit more through here as we come down into this foreground there are going to be a few greens coming in here but not too many there's a lot in the photo I'm not proposing to put too much of that in just a tap more. The violet is such a stunning colour. While that's damp, just going to put some through there. I don't want to lose all my beach, but I just want enough of the, the warm of the sand and the coolness of the reflection of this cloud into um, the painting as a whole. And I'm going to come in with a little bit more of the both of them to suggest the area through here of the water. It's very drab, very murky coloured. I've actually forgotten where my drawing is, but I think that's about right. I've given it enough. We can continue and make something more of that later on. But it does come down uh, to this sort of fanciful shape of this sort of man-made structure, pontoon or slipway, man-made slipway that extends down uh, into the uh, water, when it's certainly when it's high tide. Okay, so while we're waiting for all that to dry, we are going to continue with the dark. Let's come in with the suggested darks on our building. So I'm going to use my trusty old indigo, but I'm going to add to that and warm it up with some sepia. Both of these are transparent and work very, very well as a dark. So I'm going to put in a first color on the roof. Now the roof needs to be just ever so bit warmer. So I added a little bit of raw sienna into my roof like that. Get it nice, strong, visible statement. Get your roof line straight. And I'm sort of not doing too well at that, it can be said. All right, just got to add in a, a remarkable amount more of the yellow, uh, raw sienna, sorry. And just want to make that quite a yellowish influence on the roof line there. And the same, actually it's a different color roof to there so let's just put that in very very quickly fish bash as it were not quite but you know what I mean get that structure in make that nice angle of the roof get that cut through there and that's done now right, we can go back to adding some more 
of the indigo into that, just changing the look of the dark. We may have to come back in on this, and I'm just going to put the first, it's almost like a first wash really, just using the brush, and you can see I've got it done as a chisel. If you look at that, I've flattened it out so we get this sort of chisel shape. It gives me a nice point, but it also gives me a flat edge. You don't need necessarily to have flat brushes to do this job. Let's just bring that down. That shape of that roof is very, very uh, quite unique in many regards, I think. Not seeing one like that, but there we are. Let's put that in and we've got the roof section done. Now if we wish to, and we do run the risk of um, a bit of a bleed back, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Let's just come under here with a dark area of the building itself. Now if it bleeds back in, we can overcome that. Take it all the way down to the top of there. And as I said before, we're going to uh, create with body colour are um, areas of white fencing or whatever may be in that area. There's quite a bit of something there. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to scribble a little bit of calligraphy going on as it were. And I'm going to leave. There's a couple of light boy things. I'm going to actually suggest work around those. Just put in a little bit of drawing. And then I can tap in a little colour of red in one or two places just to make that happen. Take that roof pitch all the way through now. There should be enough dry colour to achieve that without the bleed. I think that works quite nice. There's nice light in there. I quite like that. Okay, just working around, cutting around this shape there. Take that all the way through. I've got the other window. There, okay. Leave that as, and let's come underneath here. Just to finish this section off, we've got a bit of dark there, a little bit of soffit, a bit white soffit. Leave that in place. A couple of windows in there, one smaller than the other. Let's come in there, and we can, that'll be done. That's good. Okay, we've got our building pretty much sorted. I'm gonna come in now with a warmer base, and this is gonna be Indian red, and I think I'm going to put some raw sienna to that. And I'm going to run that through an entire area. I'm not going to, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre to the very top of that mix and let that fuse down. So yellow ochre in the top of it. Just bring that through and let that spread. Take that right to the end of the paper. Nice solid line through here which is the bottom of the wall where it touches the sand or mud or whatever is there. Take that through and we've got that lower section of wall down there. Like that. And we can continue the darks together. We can put in that little bit of um, area that's underneath that supporting thing. And then there's a little shadow or something to the bottom of the wall. And then we can run that shape all the way underneath our man-made slipway that's what i'm calling it if that's not the right term i do apologize there we are that gives us that form as well while we're at it we're going to come back now and we're going to quickly look at some turquoise green that i use i love my cobalt turquoise a little bit of violet into that too just to take it away from the pure green We've got a nice dry skyline and I've got to look at this. This has got to be a little dark and it's not quite there. I'm adding a little bit of that dark material into our distance uh, trees or whatever they are way off there. Take that all the way through not to go over any boats or vessels. There we are. Right, now it is quite dark, but it isn't that dark, I don't think. I'm going to take off a little bit of that pigment. So I've got the dark top, which is where I wanted it to be in relation to the sky. So that's good. All right, I'm going to leave that at that. I want to put a little bit of aureolin now into there. Just a tap, not much. Just to suggest we've got that little bit of light color through our landscape out there. 
right, all the way down to the back of our vessels, our boats. You get that lovely sense of light on the landscape when you've got a bit of sun just touching it with storm clouds. I like that. There we go. Add a little bit more yellow into that just so it doesn't dry back too insipid. I'm going to wait and put the dark line of the bank in there in a little while. In the meantime, I'm going to come in with a fairly big dark, a little bit more indigo, a little bit of warmth into that indigo using some of these colors I pre-mixed on the palette. I just want to put in that pole, that part of the uh, yacht, nice and dark. There we go, a nice furled sail. There is a warm value, so let's put some yellow ochre into that brown color. And we can either use a pointy end of our brush or we can use a rigger. But I'm just going to try and draw very carefully down our mast into this boat. So we've got that nice mark there. We have others, so let's just put some of those in. There are other vessels, I'm going to put one through the back there. It's got a bit of a curvature to it. Hopefully that won't notice too much. There we go. And let's put a few more in <coughs> that are way off. There's some up behind the back of here as well. Let's just suggest a couple of those. Put a couple of the crossbars in, like so. There you go. Just suggesting that there are other yachts behind this. Not just them. Let's put a few more in. Bit of a yacht club or something going on up the back there. That works. A couple of dark ones. Let's put change this one to a bit of a darker value on this one. A couple more. Makes it very very sea-like, doesn't it? Very very sort of um, marine maritime, which is great. But it is obviously it's a big boating area. And there's a lot of, I mean, behind me out in the bay, there are tons and tons of vessels all moored up. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a great boating area. I'm going to just finish this off now very, very quickly. There's that little bit of white wind or something there coming down. And we've got the edge, a bit of a doorway, I think, in there somewhere. Very acute angle, so let's change that down. And let's bring that down through there. There we go. Sorted. A little bit of something off there. I have left a little bit of light there, but I'm not going to try and change that. That's there. It could have been that blue color all the way through. I don't think I've got enough to play around with that too much. If I do, I've got to be very, very careful with this. I'm just going to see if I can mimic and just patch that a little bit in. I missed it completely. But I've got to sort of put it in and just tap it off with a clean bit of towel. And it could end up causing me a problem because I've also got the mask sitting there. So it's a little bit of an error, I've got to say. Just lift that off and see how that works. I may have to just make something up for that bit. It's not the end of the world. It's not a great mistake. I could have just taken that drawing down a little more carefully, I think. All right, let's just come in here now, and we're going to cut around our posts. So there's our post, and I'm just going to come all the way through here, pretty much with that darker passage of the uh, walling, but leave a little bit so I can come in with some lights and darks on our um, bit of slipway there. There's some other stuff going through there and beyond. So let's just put that in, just warm that up a little bit. There we go. And there's all sorts of other things going on here. That's the top of that. And we haven't got, actually haven't put in uh, this area of the distance. So let's just come back in very, very quickly. In case you get talking away with the video and forget <laughs> that I, I've got an area that I've actually completely missed here. So let's just put that in, take that all the way through. That might help that area anyway. And then as I did before, just very, very quickly lift out some of that information and then come back in with that little bit of Oriolin back in here just to continue the theme through. There we go. Okay. Not so bad. I think we've got away with it. 
and this actually is not so bad either it's quite stark as a white but as it's drying back it's sort of almost sin uh, sort of suggesting that there's another cloud starting to build and that could be the base of this one just starting to appear on the horizon line okay so we're almost there i'm just going to come in and i'm going to put in some little taps to suggest these windows with the frame one i don't know maybe there are it's five okay so let's just try and get five in very quickly Got one there you go there's them and we got a couple on here let's just put those in the dark into the center of that one and into the center of that one okay so we've got those sorted out we have got a white flagpole to put in but i think i'm going to make mine a little bit dark at the top so we come up here put a flagpole in and a little flag and it's got no actual color as such because it's just there let's gonna put that in job job in that i think i said i was going to put in a little bit of red let's just clean that off that's a little bit dirty very very quick and i'll just change down now to a smaller brush and i'm going to just tap in a couple of bits of red in there just to suggest that there is something more color a little bit of warmth into what we're seeing there and leave it at that and we've got a lovely color on our boat now i've got a little bit of the dirty green and the um reds i'm going to put that in that's a little strong just tap that off and leave it almost as a stain and it's quite bluish actually so i'm going to put a little bit of cobalt to that just go over the same area again just give that stain color leave that alone let that settle down and we've got a darker blue so let's come in with some ultramarine blue this time nice strong color and we've got our fishing vessel or cruiser vessel here i'm just going to put that in nice shape to the back up to the edge there that's all we need to do let that settle down and we can come back and we can put in some violet blue and we're going to put in the windows to there and the little cabin windows to the front of that vessel that sets that up and while we've got that let's come in with that violet again just very quickly let's just drop that into the front part of this vessel there we go that gives that a nice shadow and gives it a bit of form a little bit of negative painting a little negative space painting while we've got that same value, let's come in with a quite a red bit of Indian yellow, uh, Indian red in and under this yacht. Give that that nice shape there and running up to the stern of the vessel. That's fine. A little bit of the bottom and the uh, rudder and other running gear. Can't see too much of it there, but I think that'll work. <coughs> I'm going to put in a suggested top through there and I've done it again haven't I I've actually missed quite a bit of uh, that horizon color just wonder if I can tease that in place that causing too many problems take that down yeah, I think I'll get away with that tapping it out as I did with the other hopefully that won't mess up if you can get away with that and if i put in a couple of bits of bodywork with the white afterwards i think we're we're good to go on that one so i'm just going to come in very very quickly put these posts in nice strong posts down boom there we go it's going to have a nice light side and a dark side i'm going to put that in now it's in the other side of that so let's stop it very very clearly there damp brush and just take off some of this lead edge there we go 
that does that one and let's come back let's look at this one stopping short of that side of that um, whatever structure and so if I give that structure a little bit more shape and form in the dark value to there and then a bit of shadow across there but this platform goes all the way up into reaching up into here so let's get that base in there's a sort of darker form under there that bridging section just there all right and i can put in a little darker value through here dry brush a little bit more sepia you sort of lost it a little bit i'm just going to drop that in There we go, nice and strong. Once these two posts are dry, I can just add something to those two. While we've got a little bit of ochre and a little bit of color into there, let's just put in a couple of um, masks down through there. Like that, maybe, oh, there's quite a few over there. Let's just put a few in. Didn't quite like that one. Never mind, not a problem. Straighten that up that way. There you go. Right, okay, so let us just finish this off now. We've got those two bits to do. I want to put a bit of green just into that door there. Just give that a bit of color, a bit of form. That was that, simple, sorted. Maybe another piece just into whatever this is through here. I don't know what that is, but just give that a little bit of a color. And now I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush. This is another one of those Raphael soft um, squirrel mops, but it is a much smaller one. It's a size zero. I'm going to come in with some Oriolin and some green, some of the cobalt turquoise green. And I just want to sort of scratch around and suggest may even be a little bit of thalo green now be careful of this green i always tell you but i'm going to put some orange into that green so thalo green on its own can be a real problem it is very very aggressive staining green color and on its own it is too in my opinion too false too electric and i love it when you mix it with something else so always bear that in mind so great green but use it carefully Okay, I'm just going to put in some of these sort of suggested darks and maybe a little bit of Indian yellow into that as well. Take some of the excess off. And I'm just being sort of just laying the brush down. Little lay, tap, push down and drag away. Just something like that. Just to suggest that there is um, stuff going on in the, in the mud, in the sand. Maybe some up this side too. Dirty up a little bit more. And press bring some in here. Just helps support the bottom of the picture. Stops the viewer going out. Using the rough paper that I've got here to um, dry brush and skid across the top so that we just leave and deposit pigments only on some of the top surfaces and not use that a little bit. Just a little bit stark, some of these shapes. There we go. Take some off to the bottom of the page and scribble it out this way. And almost done. I'm going to just come in with a bit of brown now, just to suggest some of these little bits of debris on the mud. Just dot it around in places. Don't overdo it. It's just enough to do and suggest. Little bits of weed that's just been left high and dry like that this is just dry brushing nothing more And you can use these marks you're making as great lead-in lines. You know, they push the viewer around your painting for here. Now I can just bring this up this way. And it's sort of, I can zigzag it out that way a little bit. I can play around with these marks that I create and create this almost 
roadway into the main picture and that is a great divisive method to guide your viewer around your work there we go i think we're almost done all i'm going to do now is get out the um white and we're going to just finish this off okay so we've got the uh, gouache and it is just a standard roundy uh, white gouache and all i'm going to be doing is just put some nice little highlight tips right on the top of there really do help that lovely light against the um, cloud just set that up that's beautiful just puts these beautiful highlights on that you couldn't quite preserve i'm going to put a bit of dark on that post there's a little part there and of course we've got and um, well, so, there's a post actually that i've missed but i'm not going to put that in now just put in a little nice highlight on that uh, flying deck that flying bridge of this vessel there nice strong white would be good do that and across the top there we are so that gives that all we need there there's a nice light tip to that boom on there and i'm not going to put in the top on there but i've got a bit of distant shoreline just to put in I just want to put in this suggested walkway. I'm just going to draw it up very randomly like that. It's quite a complex shape, to be quite honest, but I'm not going to try and replicate all of that. I'm just trying to suggest um, that there's something there, and um, it does its job. You can see what it is, I hope. Don't want to get too thick with the paint, just creating these shapes and these forms. There we go. And what else? We've got a little bit of nice, beautiful highlight in there. And we've got that nice flagpole. We're going to just drag that down through there. And we've got one on the front, which will be handy because that goes into that lovely blue. Put that in. What else have we got? Pretty nice, I think. A little bit of light into that. And these windows, just catching a little bit of light in these ones here. That's fine. And I don't know, I think these are little boys, but I'm not proposing to put too much of those in. They detract more than anything else. But we are almost done. There's a couple of little points that I've missed, and I'm just going to put those in. And we can call it a day. I'm just going to put in a little bit of white tips to some of these. Like that, and this one got a little bit messed up. Let's just put that in. There we are. Lose some of those, got a little bit heavy, not a problem. All right, okay, so that's done. Let's put that down. Let's go back to our smaller brush very, very quickly and just finish this off. What I didn't do is I want to put a bit of sepia in to the um, these along here. I didn't actually get those in. So let's just put some structure in there and there are these posts and they've got the shadow side of them. They don't go all the way up, but there we go. I think that says enough to that. Just bringing them, joining them in a little bit at the bottom. I think that works too. That's enough. Okay, what I didn't also do, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, raw sienna to that. Just going to come along here with the bank of the river on the other side through there there and down through the back of that i think that's all it needs maybe suggest a little bit through there so we got that continuance there we are okay that does that what else have i missed a little bit of dark on the side of the post i remember saying i have to do that so let's just put that in now that's the shadow side one and two a 
have a quick look round. I think we are sorted. Maybe just one more quick, quick little colour dark note on the front end of this boat here. Just giving it a little bit more than it had. I don't want to go over doing it, but I think that's all it needs, just to give that a bit more. And maybe a darker value underneath the bottom of this yacht here. It goes up, give it a bit more of a presence. There we are. Okay, so we're done and dusted. Now, the idea of this whole painting was to continue the idea of practice makes perfect in regard to skies, certainly. But that idea works for any part of a subject or any part of a painting. Wherever you feel weakest, have a go at it and, and keep practicing it. But the sky worked very, very well. This area was just a support act to all of this. Have a look at that other video if you haven't seen it. It will help you lay the foundation and the idea of practicing to come up with creating a wonderful sky for your painting. So with that all said and done, it's finished, it's complete. I do hope you've got something from it. And at the same time, don't forget the reference material for this particular painting will be on my Patreon. You don't have to be a patron to download it and use it. It's there for you to download and practice on and learn from. That's the idea of it. So take a look at that and uh, yeah, have a go at this yourself at home and see how you get on. In the meantime, I look forward to catching each and every one of you next week, next Friday for another video. I have no idea what it's going to be, but uh, tune in next week, at uh, next Friday at three o'clock. I'll catch you all then. Happy painting in the meantime, everybody. Stay safe, have fun, take care. Bye-bye. Used to be home, passing by those little towns I know so well. Stopping for gas, and then I'm behind the wheel again. Driving this like a spiritual cleanse, where every mile is a new beginning, and every bend holds a new end. Eyes on the road, don't lose control. I'm speeding fast to chase my soul. I'm driving to get away. High and low, holding on or letting go. I'm fighting another day. Neon lights in the fast lane, life riding high, reaching for the sky. I had it all but lost and fell back down again. Spent my time playing the game where every single day was a losing battle and every drink was a dead end.